another power outage? Again, man, I tell you, there's nothing worse than flipping the switch and getting nothing but that eerie silence. The fridge starts warming up, the TV's deader than a doornail, and the kids are looking at you like you forgot to pay the electric bill. Listen, before you go pointing fingers at the power company, stick around for a minute. You might be surprised to learn that some of the biggest culprits behind these blackouts are closer to home than you think. We're talking right in your own backyard, folks. And hey, if you're tired of unexpected blackouts, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, because we're always sharing eye-opening facts and tips to help you avoid unnecessary inconveniences. Did you know that some of the most common power outages are not because of faulty systems or bad infrastructure, but because of things we as customers are doing or failing to do? That's right, folks. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies when it comes to keeping the lights on. So let's dive into some of the most common reasons the power goes out. And I bet you'll be surprised to find out how much power is really in your hands. We all love trees, right? They give us shade, fresh air, and a beautiful environment, but when they grow too close to power lines, they become a disaster waiting to happen. See, those branches swaying in the breeze might look pretty, but they can wreak havoc on the grid. I'm talking about branches falling on power lines during storms, high winds pushing them into conductors, and even just the constant rubbing of leaves wearing down insulation over time. It's like that old pair of work boots you love. Eventually, the wear and tear just gets to them. And just like you wouldn't want your favorite boots to fall apart on the job, you don't want a tree taking down your power. Now I'm not saying you've got to go all Paul Bunyan on your backyard and chop everything down, but a little preventative maintenance goes a long way. Keeping trees trimmed and a safe distance from power lines is crucial, folks. Think of it like this. A little bit of tree trimming today can save you a whole lot of headache and darkness down the road. It's all about being proactive, right? And remember, if you're ever unsure about trimming near power lines, always call in the professionals. Don't try to be a hero and handle it yourself. Electricity is nothing to mess with, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. So, do your part, keep those trees in check, and let's keep the power flowing smoothly. Let's talk about a dirty little secret, folks. Power theft. Imagine this. You're filling a bucket of water, but someone is secretly poking holes in it. No matter how much water you pour in, it keeps leaking. That's exactly what happens when people steal electricity. They're essentially siphoning off power that's meant for everyone, and it's not just dishonest, it's downright dangerous. These illegal connections overload the system, and that can lead to blackouts, damaged equipment, and even fires. It's like trying to run your whole house on one tiny extension cord. Eventually, something's gonna give. And when it does, it's not pretty. Power theft hurts everyone, folks. It drives up costs for paying customers and puts a strain on the entire grid. It's like cheating on your taxes. It might seem like a victimless crime, but in the end, we all pay the price. So, what can you do about it? Well, for starters, be aware of it. Keep an eye out for any suspicious wiring or activity around your neighborhood, and if you see something, say something. Report any suspected power theft to your local authorities or utility company. They have teams dedicated to cracking down on this kind of stuff. Remember folks, electricity is a shared resource. Let's keep it fair, safe, and reliable for everyone. Say no to power theft. Ever plug too many devices into one extension and suddenly, boom, the power goes off? That, my friends, is what we call an overload. It's like trying to cram a whole week's worth of laundry into a tiny washing machine. Something's gotta give. See, every electrical circuit in your house is designed to handle a certain amount of electricity. When you plug in too many things, especially power-hungry appliances like heaters, air conditioners, or even hair dryers, you're essentially pushing that circuit beyond its limits, and just like a tired worker, it eventually burns out. This can trip breakers, blow fuses, and in some cases, even start fires. So, what's the solution? First, be mindful of how much you're plugging into one circuit. Don't treat your power outlets like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Spread out your appliances, use power strips with surge protectors, and if you're unsure about something, call a qualified electrician. It's better to be safe than sorry, right? And hey, while you're at it, take a look around your house. Are your outlets warm to the touch? Are your lights flicker when you turn on appliances? Those are signs that you might be overworking your electrical system. Don't ignore them. Get them checked out by a pro. Remember folks, electricity is a powerful force. Respect it, use it wisely, and don't overload your circuits. Digging blind. 
A recipe for a shocking surprise. So you're building a new home, digging for a borehole, or fencing your property. Sounds exciting, right? But before you break out the shovels and pickaxes, there's one crucial step you absolutely cannot skip. Calling your electricity provider. You see folks, beneath the surface of your property lies a hidden network of underground utilities. Power lines, water lines, you name it. And if you start digging without knowing what's down there, you're basically playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette. Hitting one of these lines can have serious consequences, power outages, even explosions. Not to mention the potential for serious injury or even death. So, before you even think about sticking a shovel in the ground, pick up the phone and your power provider. This is especially so in high urban areas. It's a free service that connects you with your local utility companies who will come out and mark the location of all underground lines on your property. Think of it like a treasure map only instead of X marks the spot for buried gold, it's for potentially dangerous utilities. Once you've got those lines marked, you can dig with confidence, knowing you're not going to hit anything you shouldn't. It's a simple step that can save lives and prevent a whole lot of headaches. So remember folks, when it comes to digging, call before you dig. It's the law, and it's just plain common sense. Faulty wiring. When your home becomes a fire hazard, Sometimes the problem isn't outside, it's right inside your own home. That's right folks, we're talking about faulty wiring. Now, you might not be able to see it, but those wires hidden behind your walls are the veins and arteries of your home's electrical system. And just like a clogged artery can lead to a heart attack, faulty wiring can lead to a whole host of problems, from flickering lights and tripped breakers to more serious issues like electrical shocks and even fires. So, how do you know if your wiring is a ticking time bomb? Well. There are a few telltale signs to watch out for. Flickering lights, as I mentioned, are a big one. So are outlets that are warm to the touch, discolored switch plates, or a persistent burning smell coming from your electrical panel. If you notice any of these red flags, don't ignore them. Call a qualified electrician immediately to inspect your wiring and make any necessary repairs. Remember folks, electricity is nothing to mess with. Don't try to be a hero and tackle electrical work yourself unless you're a qualified professional. It's just not worth the risk. Instead, leave it to the pros who have the knowledge, experience, and tools to get the job done safely and correctly. Think of it like this. You wouldn't try to perform surgery on yourself, would you? Well, electrical work is just as serious. So do yourself a favor, keep your home and family safe, and call a qualified electrician if you suspect any electrical problems. Vandalism when darkness falls due to malicious acts. Believe it or not, one of the biggest causes of long power outages is theft. Copper wires, transformers, and power poles. That's right, folks. Vandalism isn't just about graffiti and broken windows anymore. It's about criminals targeting critical infrastructure, disrupting our lives, and putting our safety at risk. See, these copper thieves don't care about the consequences of their actions. They're in it for the quick buck they can get from selling stolen metal. But the damage they leave behind can take days, weeks, or even months to repair. It's like someone slashing your tires and stealing your car battery. Sure, they might get a few bucks for the parts, but you're left stranded, inconvenienced, and out of pocket. Vandalism affects entire communities, folks. It disrupts businesses, shuts down schools, and leaves people without power for essential services like hospitals and traffic lights. It's a selfish act that hurts everyone. So what can we do about it? Well, for starters, be vigilant. If you see any suspicious activity around power equipment, report it immediately to the authorities. Don't try to be a hero and intervene yourself, just be a good witness and let the professionals handle it. We can also work together as communities to protect our critical infrastructure. Neighborhood watch programs, security cameras, and even just being aware of our surroundings can make a big difference. Remember folks, power outages caused by vandalism are preventable. Let's all do our part to keep our communities safe, our lights on, and those copper thieves out of business. Keep the lights on, together. Now you know, power outages don't always come from system failures. Sometimes our own actions or inactions make the problem worse. We've talked about everything from overgrown trees to power theft, overloaded circuits to dig in blind, faulty wiring to vandalism. It's a lot to take in, I know, but the good news is, there's a lot we can do to prevent these problems and keep the power flowing smoothly. So here's your call to action. Trim trees near power lines. Say no to illegal connections. Avoid overloading sockets. Check before you dig. Use professional electricians. Report vandalism. It's all about taking responsibility, folks. Just like keeping your own house in order, we gotta do our part to maintain the infrastructure that keeps our world running. 
If we all do our part, power outages will be fewer and life will be better for everyone. So let's take action. Want more tips on how to prevent power issues and improve your home's electricity safety? Then hit that subscribe button right now, like this video, and share it with your friends and family. Let's keep the lights on, together!